welcome to a new episode of the Woolly Thistle Shopcast. I'm Corrine. I own and operate the Woolly Thistle. I'm a Scot living and knitting here in New Hampshire. And I hope that you love our uh, Woolly Thistle Shopcast as well as the shop itself. Thanks so much for watching and just know that you are very welcome here. Don't forget to sign up for our shop letter, which you can do on our website at thewoollythistle.com. Two L's in woolly always. That's the British way. So what am I wearing today? Well, you'll know this. This is my tapestry cowl, the multicolored one. And we still have a few kits available for this. Uh, we hope to keep this in stock permanently. So there's no um, immediate rush to get your hands on this right now. But um, if you have any wish to knit it, I would do it while it's still a kit and uh, get all these colors and the uh, pattern tells you how to put it all together. It is May Day and it is still freezing outside, so I am still wearing a lot of wool. Of course, this is my um, vanilla sweater knitted in 4128 of Rama Fennel Garn. Um, and this is basically a uniform that I wear constantly. I'm always in one of these vanilla sweaters. Um, you can see I've got a long little tunic on today and a pair of jeans. I've even got my winter boots on. It's really quite cold. Um, and I threw them on because I forgot to put socks on. <laughs> so there you have it. So that's what I'm wearing today. Let's get uh, started right away with the winner for this episode. Uh, every time we give a $25 gift certificate to the Woolly Thistle away to a lucky winner, all you need to do to be in the running for the gift certificate is to uh, leave us a comment on this episode, give us a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. We are nearly 9 thousand subscribers so maybe we can um get up to nine thousand and we'll have a wee celebration of some sort so thank you if you are already subscribed and watching us it's really great to have you here and i love your comments i love um hearing how much you enjoy uh, the woolly thistle and i know that you enjoyed the talk about jameson and smith and their different yarns if you want to know what the difference is between jameson's spindrift and jameson of smith two ply uh, jumper weight then keep watching because I'll be talking about that in this episode so the winner this time is Katie A and that's Katie with an IE and she said it was interesting to hear about the different JNS yarns I especially love the colors of their cap yes their cap for De Crofter thank you for another enjoyable podcast well, thank you, Katie A, for watching, giving us a thumbs up and subscribing. You are the winner. Just send us an email to info at the Woolly Thistle. Put winner in capitals in the subject line, and that way we will be able to pick you out nice and quickly and get your gift certificate off to you. So that was easy, wasn't it? Um, congratulations. So yeah, I've got so much to share with you as always, and I hope that you're settled in. You've got your drink ready. You've got your knitting at your side. Maybe you're already knitting. That's great. Settle in, and we'll have a nice chin wag and um, catch up. It's always great to hear from you, so do leave us a comment because I do love to hear uh, that you're watching it and enjoying it or if there's anything I can do to make it better that's good too all right so um, Mother's Day is this weekend too so you doubly should be sitting back with your feet up knitting and I just want to wish all mothers of all walks of life uh, mothers of furry critters birth mothers adoptive mothers natural birth mothers c-section mothers and mothers uh, of all stripes so no matter what connection you might have to mothering i hope that you are putting your feet up and taking some time out this weekend for yourself uh, that's if you're not being you know spoiled rotten already so yeah let's just get on and talk about what i have going on here but i did want to say just happy mother's day to everyone we had another question and before I get into what I've got to show y'all, we did have another question and I like getting questions in the comments. Um, this came from Marianne and she asked what DK weight yarns we have that would be suitable for cables. And I have a couple of options. Um, this one here, I showed you last week actually, but it doesn't hurt to show it again. These are cables and I think you can see that they have good definition. They, they pop. And so this is Rowan Felted Tweed. It's a DK weight yarn and is really good with cables as well as all other applications. 
Um, somebody else in the comments asked about um, that this is a DK weight yarn and Marie Wallen used it an awful lot in her designs, um, but that she often uh, designs in a fingering weight uh, gauge. And that is true. This is one of these yarns that you can knit at a tighter gauge or a looser gauge and it will, it will act differently, but it will look good no matter what. Um, so there are quite a few Marie Wallen designs out there. Uh, we have them in the books, uh, the little square books that she has. Um, many of them are written purely for Rowan Felted Tweed. So this is a good one for cables, uh, Marianne, or Marianne, I'm sorry. And then another one I wanted to point out is this one. Look at these. This is, of course, Blacker Swan DK. Um, and there's, there's Swan DK. So first of all, it's a DK weight. Uh, it's a three ply, so it's very round. And when you have a nice round yarn like this, you're going to get good cables. This is um, Falkland Merino. I think this has a touch of Shetland in it, if I'm not remembering wrong. I'm pretty sure that's true. Comes in lots of different colors, but I really like these three together. And this would make up beautiful cables. Being a Merino, it's very, very soft. Uh, it will pill more than um, other wools that I would uh, knit with as well. Uh, but it is a it is a woolly merino if there's such a thing. This is um, non superwash, of course. So this is a great yarn, um, and especially if you're new to woolly wools, this might be a good one to step into. You know, when you're when you're um, trying out some new woolly wools, this is a rustic yarn in that it's uh, it's not superwash. It doesn't have anything fancy done to it. It is just merino wool from the Falkland Islands which are um, south of Argentina. So down on the Southern hemisphere there. But just, you can tell, look at how plump and pretty this yarn is. So this would make great cables and it comes in a four ply as well, which we stock. So I hope that helps give you a couple of options to think about. So what am I knitting on? Well, I, <laughs> I should have had um, an almost finished body of a sweater to show you. Um, but then, uh, nope, I had to rip it out and start again. So this is what I have to show you. And it's basically a neck hole. I've just joined in the round. This is going to be a cardigan. And it's knitted in Vams, Rama Vams, which is their um, kind of worsted iron weight yarn. It's woolly and lovely. Uh, so this is my ball. This is another ball. <laughs> yeah. So I knitted quite a lot of this and decided to reproduce because it wasn't just the way I wanted. But I decided I wanted an almost black cardigan that I can wear with a nice uh, long white uh, shirt underneath, maybe a linen shirt. This is going to be a semi-fitted cardigan. And I'm designing it. And... So far, so good. And I joined it in the round because it's going to have a steak. And you guys are going to love it, I'm sure, if I can get it right. So this is what's next up for me. Um, I wasn't afraid to rip it right back. I ripped it out completely and started over last night. The reason being is it knits up so fast. When you're used to knitting a bunch of fingering weight, this is like, it feels like cheating. It's so fast. So I think this is going to be a quick knit for lots of us. I think it's going to be a great um, first foray into sticking, if that's your jam. It's going to be really good for beginner knitters, um, no matter your level, because it's raglan shaping. So that's easy, nothing complicated uh, with shaping the shoulders. And we're used to it on the vanilla sweater. There'll just be one stick up the middle. For the cardigan opening and um, it's knitted on this lovely woolly wool from Rama. So here is a quick collection of some of the Vams colorways we have. Uh, you will recognize right away this one here is 4128 and I know that my second uh, sweater or cardigan is going to be in this because I can't get enough of this mauve color and you can see um, how thick it is compared to say a fingering weight 
It's loosely plied, so it's very fluffy, very, very lovely to knit. So um, that will be coming up next. But we also have many of the uh, colors that you already know from the um, vanilla sweater uh, popular colors. But these are just great, aren't they? So lots of colors of them. So you're going to have your choice. And this will be coming out when it comes out. There's no deadline on this. I'm not going to rush it. I want to make it just the way I want it so that you will love it too. So this is what I'm knitting on right now. It's the only thing I brought to show you, unfortunately. I forgot to bring my socks. And yeah, the Ridiculous Renunculus is still in timeout because I want to knit on this. And I was knitting on this. And then I ripped it out as you do. Um, I don't know how you feel about ripping things out. I have never had a problem with ripping things out because I'm a daily knitter. I need to knit and it really doesn't matter if I'm knitting and making progress or knitting and ripping out and just knitting again. I just want to be knitting. If you're like that, then you're probably not afraid to frog things and it's not a big to do um, because you want to get it right. I'll, but you know, that said, sometimes yeah, there has been times where I'm like, no, you know, I can live with that little imperfection. I'm not going to rip it out for that. And so I don't. But for the most part, I'm quite happy ripping things out because I get to knit more that way. All right, let's see what else I want to tell you about here today. There's that. Okay, so at the time of recording this, we um, had the Star Cardi go on sale and that sold out. We are working very hard to get more yarn in for that. We also had the De Crofter Kip come out. This is Wilma Malcolmson's design for um, Shetland Wool Week 2021. Uh, this is her Spindrift color selection here. We sold out of these. Um, so these will all be out in the mail. You should have them by the time you're seeing this if you are lucky enough, enough to snag one. So the Spindrift colorways are very blue, very, very pretty. Um, but we knew we were going to sell out of those. We did get a lot in, but they sold out. <clears throat> so we came up with some colorways of our own that we thought might be nice in the Spindrift yarn here. This is the natural, although it's natural colors, but it's not all natural colors. Let me rephrase that. So some of these are dyed, but they're dyed in natural colors. So we think this is a very nice this would make a very nice masculine cap, I think, as well as a lady cap, for sure. Um, these nice colors are very muted, which is lovely. Then we picked out some brighter ones. And I just want to put these back properly so that we don't get mixed up. This one we're calling Poppy, named after one of the colors in this. Isn't that pretty? Oh, yes. We likey. So the um, pattern has um, two balls of the base color and then the rest are contrast colors. So we think this is very nice. And we're selling these as kits. So you get the little uh, woolly thistle tote bag and you can pick up the pattern for, for free from Shetland Wool Week. And then lastly, we've got thistle, but I looked high and low and I can't find one of the colors. They must've gone walk about. But there is a dark purple, oops, a darker purple than this one. So it's the damask colorway. It's very dark purple. Um, and it goes here. And these are, yes, you know, these are thistle colors, aren't they? Very pretty. So we have three um, choices for you of made up kits that, you know, if you want a kit for the, um, for the, uh, for the De Crofter kit, then you can get Spindrift alternate colors in these three and we will get more well we hope we'll get more original colors as chosen by Wilma um this blue here we hope we'll get more of these but we just don't know when we will and of course uh we will have the Shetland um Will Week hat in Jameson and Smith coming out as well in fact that might be out right around now um so um those are lovely browns and oranges and a very um, lovely touch of sort of a bluey green in there. So those will be out too. And we hope to have enough for everyone who wants one. But we shall see. Um, that particular uh, colorway includes Shetland Supreme. Uh, so their base color is one ball, 150 gram ball of Shetland Supreme. And then the other colors are two ply jumper white. 
And so you're going to get to see, if you haven't before, you're going to get to see uh, those two yarns play together in that pattern, which is really, really interesting and should make you feel good about using it um, in your color work together. Now, I'm sure some of you recognize My Lovage and it's in her uh, book, Windswept, that we stock. Um, she designed it actually for Rowan, uh, I want to say... <sighs> I can't remember what it's called, but it was their fingering weight Rowan kind of felted. Can't remember what it's called now. But anyway, it, it's discontinued. But I knitted mine all in Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight um, with the base color, this fawn color and what the body's made with. I knitted that from their Shetland Supreme. So you can see it here and it plays so well with the two ply. You know, obviously this has been blocked and washed and worn and washed and worn. So um, you can see just how great those go together. This was a very fun project to knit and change the colors for and experiment. Long time viewers will know I've knitted this sweater twice because um, it didn't fit me the first time. Actually, I've only knitted the top half twice. I knitted the color work twice because that's where it didn't fit me and I had to rehash it to make it fit. But then I took the body that I had knitted already, which is this lovely fun color and I did surgery on it um I don't know why I'm compelled to point out all the the bits of my knitting that you know are really not very sightly but I kitchenered this body onto the color work and you know what for the most part it's okay I mean I know it's there but I don't think you'd think if you saw me in this you'd think that I'd Frankenstein this thing maybe you would <laughs> but there we go so yes my knitting my knitting is always very uh what's the word adventurous i don't set out to be adventurous it turns into like the nightmare movie or something uh where you know you start out for a nice picnic and you think oh yes this is a walk in the park next thing you know you're caught in a blizzard and there's things chasing you through the woods and uh yeah i don't know but it's it's this is what happens to me it's why i knit and get so much knitting done is i tend to knit a lot of things over and over so yes yeah, so anyway i'm really happy with this now because i did keep at it i did cut it i did change all this up i changed the sizing um on the sleeves and where the where the join for the sleeves actually starts because it was lower and on me, that didn't work very well, um, but I love this. So anyway, the point of showing you this is that it goes with Jameson and Smith two ply as well as the Supreme. Yeah, and I had to do the uh, Frankenstein surgery on the arms as well. <laughs> so, you know, don't be scared knitters, don't be scared. You can do all this if I can do it. I'm self-taught uh, pretty much, so just like you. Right, uh, what else do I want to show you? I am going to talk about Jameson and Smith and Jameson's in a minute, but why don't I show you what's uh, new and available in the shop? Oh, we have it. So this went live. This launched just yesterday at the time of recording. Of course, this is Lina's 52 Weeks of Shawls. And I've been having a wee poke through and I have a couple of ones I want to share with you. Um, probably I chose this one because it's pink and very fluffy looking and just very snuggly. That's my jam for sure. This one is the first one in the book and it's called Venus. Um, I really love rustic, um, lacy shawls and I'm just seeing that this one is knitted in tuka fingering so we could totally make this happen here. Isn't that beautiful? It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. This one is called Aloft. It's number four. And Rebecca Verkompas is the designer for that one. Very nice. I love this one too. It's called Wildflowers. It's number 18. And it's knitted um, in reverse stockinette so that you get extra relief. Uh, with those pattern stitches but it's beautiful I love it and this one's designed by Katya Gorbacheva 
And this one, let's see what yarn this uses. Four skeins of Maya by Ara. It's lovely. Oh, the chart. Oh my gosh. And then I really like the color work of this one. Let me see if I can find the details for it. Well, we've seen pictures of this one. This is amazing. Isn't that beautiful? On that beautiful model there. This here is number 27, Drops of Memory. Beautiful. But I was intending to show you this one. And can I find it? It's on a photo page. Ah, big shawls, little shawls. I think this one's really fun. And that one's called Costner and it's number 30. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Oh yeah, see this speaks to my snuggle factor right there. She's literally wrapped up in a blanket. That one's 34 Florence. Aha, uh -huh. here's the one. Aini, number 35. Natalia Sinelshikova. It's very geometric. Really pretty. So there's all kinds of beautiful designs in here that you... You'll, you'll be sure to find, you know, several that you want to knit. And I think there are plans afoot for people knitting the whole book, kind of like they did with the socks. Um, so that, that'll be fun to watch. I don't think I would get through the whole book myself. All right, so let's see. Um, I did want to share the Gotland that we still have a little bit left of. This is Blacker Gotland. And... This is a rare yarn indeed from them. It comes out just once in a blue moon and it includes um, some of the yarn from Sue Blacker's own Gotland uh, herd or flock. Um, and it's very sad uh, that Sue Blacker passed away. Um, that was, it was a complete surprise when I heard and uh, very sad indeed. So our thoughts go out to her family and Blacker Yarns. So yeah, this is very special. Um, we don't have any of the natural gray left in stock and we only got a very little bit of this yarn anyway because it is so um, limited in, in scope and availability. But this here is their uh, Lightning, Dawn and bl Bluster colors which are really pretty yep we know me we know me well all right and then I wanted to also share their um Jacob that came out at the same time and I love this look so we have this is their four ply and this is the DK this is their Jacob limited edition and it's a marl it's a natural marl uh, these are the granite marls, so these are slightly darker. There's a marl stone, which is a lighter gray, which I don't have any left in the naturals. This feels really soft and bouncy. Really nice. And uh, they did a little bit of dyeing on this too, and it's come back feeling really bouncy as well. So this is the Jacob 4-ply in the purple granite so on this base they've dyed it purple and uh, this one here's four ply Ooh, nice and on their marlstone base we have here um, purple marlstone and green marlstone and both of these are four ply and those pretty really squishy and lovely and you get um let's see if it tells me quickly 380 yards for this 100 gram so we have a bit of that left if this at all interests you jacob is of course its own breed it's light and airy and it's very bouncy and it is just lovely 
So I hope you grab those if you're at all interested. I don't think they'll last very long in any numbers. So you might have a project in mind for that. That would be good. Um, here we have, I just want to show you this quickly, is the um, tapestry cowl, the two color tapestry cowl. Thank you so much for your orders for, for the kits in this. Um, it is, of course, the same cowl that I'm wearing right now, but just in black and white which next winter is going to look so striking on all of you. And I'm, I'm wearing this one because it goes with mine. Although I think the black and white goes too with everything, which is nice. So yeah, we do have kits for that left. Uh, we just put more stock in as I'm recording this. And we do have some left in this. And my hope is to uh, keep the kits in stock forever more. That would be nice. And eventually we will release the pattern so that you can pick your own colors. It's quite hard to pick seven colors and make that work, but I'd love to see um, your renditions of that if you decide to go with it. Um, the, two, the two colors is much easier uh, on picking colors. Just have to get a nice high contrast. Or maybe you could actually um, experiment with a lower contrast. And, you know, these, these all have good contrast. It's just that the colors are muted. Things to think about. On pre-order right now, we have a few new things. We have Shetland Wool Adventures Journal, uh, Volumes 1 and 2. Uh, those are still on pre-order and they'll be going live at the end of May. Uh, Pom Pom 37 is now on pre-order and um, that releases on June 2nd, I believe. And then by hand, uh, that'll be out any minute. Um, so if it's no longer a pre-order, we will just be selling those normally, but they have been on pre-order. And that is um, all around Rhode Island. Uh, Kitty um, from Katrin Coles is featured in there. So I can't wait to see it. I love that magazine anyway, as you well know. And of course we have um, Lina 11 that's going live on May 7th, which is actually right around when this will go live. So that will no longer be a pre-order and you'll be able to just um, order normally if you have waited for that to launch. Um, new yarns coming to the Woolly Thistle. I have one to show you today. Uh, we've been giving sneaky peeks and I wonder if you've been able to guess uh, what it is. And maybe I've just given it away now because you've seen labels perhaps, but we are now proudly stocking Bichet Boucher a Le Petit Lamb's Wool. So I love this yarn. I've loved it for a long time. I have purchased it when I've been out and about on my travels. So yes, Le Petit Lamb's Wool. Uh, this is soft and airy. It's very wooly. It's not treated with anything. It comes from a Scandinavian family living in France, but the actual wool comes from a Scottish family mill and it's lamb's wool, which, what is that? Well, it is um, the first clip off of a sheep. So their very first haircut is their lamb's wool. And it's, you know, it's thought to be um, the softest you'll ever get off that sheep. So it's very special. Um, it's a very special clip. And this does result in beautiful, uh, soft yarn, not merino soft. I want to warn you, this is not a merino. This is a Scottish lamb's wool. I imagine it's several different breeds all just blended in there. Um, yeah, it's really nice. And the dyeing is really pretty too. It's dyed in the wool would be my guess, which means before it's spun. And then it's got all these little flecks through it to make it very interesting to look at. This is their deep red, it's like a cranberry. So we have 14 different colors to start us off, this lovely green. Uh, their Le Petit is their um, four ply fingering white. This is a natural gray. We have lots of lovely blues in our choices here. And the family, it really is a family affair. Um, all these lovely labels are handwritten by one of the sisters. And one of them uh, designs a lot of uh, garments that you can knit with this. So there's no end of inspiration as to what to do with your, your beautiful yarn. Oh, I, I'm such a sucker for gray. I love that. And then put it with this. Oh, 
This here is soft orange brown. And then maybe with this. This is woolen spun. So that right there is a clue that it'll be good for color work. Oh, gorgeous. Bustabini. Gorgeous. That, that just popped out of my head. I just thought these three colors, Bustabini is a three color hat. In fact, it was designed by Gudrun Johnson for Shetland Wool Week a couple of years back. Let me pop these all up here. Actually, no. Let me keep holding them for you. Uh, then we have this lovely light baby blue. Oh, so pretty. We tried to get the pink, but we couldn't get that. That was out of stock in the lamb's wool. This lovely beige. Very soft. I mean, you can see there's a lot of... Yeah. And then their cream. This is one of the nicest creams I've ever seen. It's like... It's buttery. It reminds me of the Flugga cream from um, Jameson and Smith and their Heritage. Almost a yellowy cream. It's so warm and buttery. Just beautiful. So these are the 14 colors that we have in their Le Petit Lamb's Wool. But we had to try out their Silk Mohair, which is 30% silk and 70% mohair. Their mohair is sourced from South Africa, where um, their suppliers practice ethical treatment of their animals, which results in beautiful, fluffy mohair. So this is the pink. I wasn't able to get the lamb's wool in this pink. Um, and if I can pair up some colorings for you, I will. Let's see here. So we've got the cream. Ta -da! Gorgeous. Just add that fluff. Uh, this beautiful red, we can fluff up here. Their dye job is really, really nice. God, that's juicy. Isn't that juicy? And let's see, we have some blues to match up. Yeah. So what you do to get your fluffy uh, vanilla sweater, if you're going to knit it in this, <laughs> is... Um, you hold one, uh, you know, one strand of this with one strand of that together and you just knit them together. And then every stitch turns into this fluffy thing. Oh my God, I think I have to take some home with me. <laughs> ah, yes, this is coming home. All right, nope, that one. How about this? This would go well together. I've got another gray one here. And of course you could knit the mohair just by itself. There's some very lovely drapey light uh, patterns for just mohair, but I really love the look of putting them together with the wool. That, that really does float my boat. And I think this would go great together here. So I hope you're excited about this. Um, I, I had uh, Virginia, Ginny, uh, guessing in my Instagram <laughs> what this was and she hit the nail on the head and she is a big fan of it she says which is good oh it's lovely so let me just show you i only have nine colors in the mohair right now it's like a fluffy little bird isn't it um but we'll get more if you like it yeah how many colors should I, maybe i don't have them all I might not have all the colors of mohair that we have out here, but we, we have a small selection that are, is very, very delicate there. Oh, get my thumb out of the way. There we go. Very pretty. So I hope you like this new addition to the Woolly Thistle. Uh, those will be in the shop after this goes live, um, probably on the same day. We'll be sure to um, let you know in our email. Be sure you're on our email list because that's when you find out when things like this go on sale. All right. Now, let me tell you, because I've been asked what the difference is between Jameson and Smith and Jameson's uh, of Shetland. Jameson's of Shetland is a family run business. It's probably five or six generations old now. And it was started over on the west coast of Shetland, I believe in Sand Ness. And we can put a map up here to show you. And so Jameson's 
uh, of Shetland has these lovely 25 gram balls of Spindrift. That is their equivalent of Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. Uh, they have a mill on Shetland. It's the only mill on Shetland and they uh, mill all their yarn right on the island. The colors of Jameson's of Shetland is phenomenal. They often have uh, many colors in one ball. And they do name their colors. This one is uh, Sunset is number 186. And the name is right on the label. And it's beautiful. It is slightly less yardage for the um, for the weight, I think, let me see if it tells us here, it should. It says approximately 105 meters. I think that's something like 112 uh, yards off the top of my head. Now I brought out a similar color of Jameson and Smith to show you this one. So this is Jameson and Smith, again from Shetland. Uh, Jameson and Smith uh, is, is um, a Shetland business and their whole purpose is to support the crofters and farmers on the islands and they actually buy about 80 percent of all the Shetland wool that is produced on the islands and this is their two ply so it's, it equates with spindrift I would say as a rule of thumb Jameson and Smith's colors are usually going to be a bit brighter or lighter than the spindrift counterpart but it's not like, you know, you have one color, you definitely have the other color to match over here. This is just a lucky coincidence here. And you can see up close that they're quite different, actually. So if you're knitting a pattern that calls for this um, and the colors, you know, you really want those colors, then you're going to try and get the spin drift. However, they are interchangeable for sure. They will play nicely together if you knit them in one garment. Jameson and Smith has their, um, well, Jameson and Smith is run by Shetland Wool Brokers. Uh, and the wool brokers uh, collect all the yarn and uh, that's when Ollie comes in and he is their hand grader. He looks at every fleece that comes in and will grade them, sort them into very fine lace knitting, hand spinning, uh, then, uh, you know, other nice uh, fleeces that are good for um, hand knitting, right down to fleeces that are so rough that really they can only be used for um, carpeting or rugs, um, or it goes to uh, making bed filling, things like that. So um, Shetland Wool Brokers sorts out all the yarn, bail, all the wool, bails it all up and sends it down to Yorkshire where it is spun there. And then it goes back up to Jameson and Smith or the Shetland Wool Brokers. I think those terms are sort of interchangeable. So both of these um, lines benefit the farmers and the crofters and the businesses, the knitters, everybody on Shetland, both of these do. And so when, when you're knitting your um, Fair Isle colour work using uh, Shetland wool that's from Shetland, you are directly benefiting the people who work to raise these sheep and uh, the mill that makes the wool and um, all the people uh, whose industry revolves around this wool. All the knitwear designers and um, weavers, knitters, garment makers, the farmers, the crofters, um, the tourist industry. So when you, when you do buy this, you are directly supporting those very people. It's a really nice straight shot. So you feel good about that whenever. Um, so Spindrift has many, many colors and we are trying our best to stock as many of them as we can get. This is always harder for us to source than anything else that we stock for some reason. We find this very difficult, but we do try. Uh, we brought it back and we will continue to try and increase our library of colors. Um, Jameson and Smith comes in over 90 colors, which is a huge palette anyway. And this we have much better luck with um, stocking. 
So um, although they have been affected by COVID and things have tightened up a little bit, which is why the Star Cardi, um, we didn't have as much as we would have liked, but we're working on getting more and we'll just have to wait and see. So this um, we have stocked almost from the very beginning of time here at the Woolly Thistle. It's one of our best sellers. And I love that when you buy this, you are um, through me buying it from Shetland and the money goes directly to all the people who are working hard to bring this to market. So I hope that helps um, explain a little bit the differences and the similarities. I think what you want to take away from this is these can be used together. So you don't have to knit a whole pattern just in one or the other. You can uh, use them together. So when you're a color work knitter and uh, you're buying these 25 grams of balls to get you started on that particular project, when you have stuff left over, uh, keep it, ball it up, and um, you can use it together uh, for sure. So I think that's the big message I want you to take away. Uh, other than you are directly supporting Shetland with uh, with these with this yarn, um, but other than that, you can use them together. And uh, Jameson Spindrift has a huge array of colors. They are quite complex usually. Jameson Smith does also have uh, complex colors, but they also have more flat colors, meaning um, dyed on white, so they're more solid. And um, the only other difference is that Jameson and Smith is cheaper than Spindrift. And that is just the, the distribution um, structure of these. So one is more expensive than the other. Um, but Jameson and Smith, my desert island yarn, hands down, anytime, all the time, except for fennel garn. <laughs> I'm so bad. And maybe Berlin yarns. Mm-hmm. All right, so let me tell you what else, I hope that was helpful and let me think what else I want to share with you. We did get a few more buttons in and we will be getting more buttons in. These are, these are going uh, really well. Uh, I wanted to show you that we got some in this coppery color. So some of the uh, pewter color designs that we uh, like, we've gone and gotten the copper as well. Um, these are the little square ones, we have some of them. And then these are bigger ones and it's called the mandala. Um, I do want to point out that these little buttons are only 11 millimeters diameter. And this one here is probably, I forget, 15 millimeters. So this one's bigger. These work with the Star Cardi. These will work with a lightweight uh, yarn, like Jameson and Smith, something delicate. Um, these bigger buttons um, are, you know, more normal size, if you want to say. Um, so they're all sized on the website. Be sure to check your pattern um, or, you know, check that you understand what size you're buying so that you're not disappointed if they're too small for you. Um, I know a lot of people like to collect buttons and buttons are quite good. Buttons are hard to find. So, you know, um, the uh, Unst Cardi by Gudrun Johnson, this size would be great. Um, the Star Cardi, perfect for that. So anyway, we have more coming and we're going to try and increase our selection because we do see that you really like them. Just want to quickly add that we are fully stocked again in um, John Arbin Exmoor Sock Yarn, so that's back. I wanted to make sure you know that the Booness Tam is in stock right now, at least at the time of recording. And we've got a picture of that here. That's from MJ Mucklestone's book, Fair Isle uh, Weekend. Audrey Unst by Gudrun Johnson is also available in kit form in Rama Finnelgarn. And that comes with your bag and your buttons and the pattern is included in that kit too. So that's a good deal. Uh, check that out. So I think that's all I have for you this time. I hope that you go visit the shop. There's so much more there than I can ever show you during these shop casts. But it's really great to catch up with you. And I hope that you are keeping well, that you have a lovely weekend. And that if you go out, you wear a mask and take your knitting. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. Ha, ha, ha.